I'm going to show you how to get this, or I'm going to show you my way of getting all of this off, and then how to finish the bottle so it's nice and preserved forever. What's going on everybody? So I have gotten quite a few requests over the years and I've seen a lot of chatter across Facebook groups and whatnot on how to clean antique bottles. So yesterday, since we did find a few bottles, I thought today I would show you guys how I clean antique bottles. So come on, let's go take a look at what we got and we'll go over what to do. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can clean antique bottles depending on where you find them. Now, if you find them in the ground, you may find them in the river, you may find them in a lake, um, you may find them in an old barn. Depending on the severity of the bottle, there are multiple ways that you can clean them. Now, a lot of people tell you to put blue fish rocks down into the bottle, stick your thumb over it with some water and shake it. The problem with that is if a bottle has been in the river and has been rolling for years, uh, it has wore that sand has wore away some of the structure of the glass So when you put those little blue fish pebbles in there and shake it uh, You have a tendency to break the bottom out of the bottle and you really don't want to do that another good way that I Okay, another way that I recommend that you do if you're gonna go that approach is take some rice Just regular old white rice like you eat you cook and eat put it in the bottle fill it full of water shake it up and down a couple times now you're only going to get a couple shakes out of it before that rice turns soft so you'll have to do it multiple times but that rice is gentle enough that it will not break the bottle and it does have enough abrasiveness to it that it will clean the sides to an extent so hang on let's go get some stuff i'm gonna show you a couple more things and then we'll get to cleaning now another good way to clean your bottles is get you a rod similar to this now this happens to be a tig welding rod I used to weld for a living, so I got a bunch of this stuff laying around. It's not really um, easy to bend. You know, it won't stay bent. You have to bend the end with a pair of pliers. You don't want something quite as thin as a clothes hanger. You want something with a little more sturdiness. So when you when you stick it in the bottle, you got some uh, some like some uh, some sturdiness, some leverage in there to clean the inside. So, anyways, what you want to do is you want to bend the ends at two different angles. So this side's slightly bent, and this side is very bent. And what you do is you take a small piece of Scotch-Brite, green Scotch-Brite like this, you get it wet, you fold it up like this, and you cram it inside the bottle like that, all right? And then you take whichever end works best for you, and you put the end of that rod on that Scotch-Brite, and now you can scrub the inside of the bottle up and down, back and forth, and get all that gunk out of the inside. Okay, this is my way of cleaning bottles. So what you wanna do is get your bottle, whichever one you're gonna clean. We're gonna clean this, uh, this Brown Brothers bottle right here that we found yesterday. And you wanna go to Lowe's or your local hardware store like Ace Hardware, something like that. Get you some powdered Barkeeper's Friend. Okay, it looks just like this. It's a can, looks just like Comet, except it says Barkeeper's Friend. You also wanna get you the liquid, the soft cleanser Barkeeper's Friend. Now, I can't remember how much these are, but they're not that much. But these are great, great uh, cleaning tools, especially for glass. So what you want to do is take your bottle. You want to get it wet, like so. Okay. Take your liquid, or I mean, sorry, take your powder, uh, Barkeeper's Friend, sprinkle it on the outside of the bottle. Now, this won't hurt it. It's not abrasive enough to hurt it take you a green scotch bright and we're just going to scrub the outside of the bottle. You want to make sure it stays wet. You don't want it too dry. Okay, we'll scrub the inside of the bottle like so. And it just is abrasive enough that it gets um, all of that hard dirt off the outside of the bottle. Don't worry about scratching it. It's not gonna scratch it enough to notice. And if you do scratch it, there are ways that you can get the scratches out also that I'll explain to you a little later. So I'm just gonna scrub this off because it's got a bunch of 
river funk on it. And some of it you're not going to be able to get off. So don't worry about getting it all off. The next step will definitely take what you can't get off that scotch bright off. Let's just wash it off here. Now already you can tell a major difference. You know, most of that blackness is gone off of it. Uh, you can still see some in the crown here in the lettering and the embossing. You still see some in the smaller embossing there. Same thing on the bottom. The next step is going to take all that off. Let's go do Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go back to Lowe's or while you're at Lowe's, when you're getting the barkeeper's friend, you want to get a gallon of this. So this is muriatic acid. Uh, it's like $9.98 for a gallon. There's two different types. There's the clean strip and then there's like a... Uh, an all natural uh, variety, but in my opinion, they both work uh, because if you get the acid on your hands, it will burn. Good pair of safety glasses is always a plus too. I will put safety glasses on because I've got some in there, uh, but I do not have any rubber acid gloves. So I'm just gonna be extra careful. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the muriatic acid, all right, you're gonna pour it into a bin or a Tupperware container. Try not to let it splash too much because if it gets on you, it is going to burn. Now, I don't know the exact quantity, but I would say maybe a quarter full in the bottom of muriatic acid. And this is just a little uh, six and a half quart Tupperware container. And then the rest is going to be water. So what's that, a one to four ratio maybe? So we're going to fill this up with water, just regular old tap water. And please do this outside. Don't take it inside and sit it in your kitchen, around your kids or anything like that, because, you know, acid does have um, some pretty bad uh, fumes that come off of it. And it will, I don't know that it will hurt you, but it's definitely not good for you. So do this outside on your porch, on your fire pit, on your trailer, in your backyard, somewhere away from pets and children and everything else so i don't know if you guys can see it or not but if you look down in there you can see it looks like the water's moving so that's the acid neutralizing in the water so what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottle okay we're going to put it down in the water again not to touch it because it will still burn you even diluted with water here's this big old ugly dark stained coke i'm going to drop him in there and i got one more right here I'm gonna drop down in here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these soak for about an hour and a half to two hours and then we're gonna come back and see what they look like okay so it's been about an hour and you can clearly see all the brown uh, river goo in the bottom of the bucket so now what the acid is gonna do is the acid will not eat it off completely however it does make it very soft so that it is very easy to clean off so we're going to go ahead and get these bottles out we're going to empty the uh the acid out of them and once you get them out you want to make sure that you wash them off real good with water uh, again wearing gloves or using like some tongs that you use to like flip your steaks or your pork chops on the grill uh, make sure they're good and clean with water before you put your bare hands on them so we're going to go ahead and get these out get them cleaned off and then we'll go to the next step okay so i got them out of the water or out of the uh cleaning mixture and i washed them off with the water and you can already see that this brown brothers that i haven't even touched with a uh a uh, cleaning pad yet just by spraying it off of the water got all of that funk from outside of those letters and these that you couldn't even see through earlier now you can see through to an extent uh, so now we're going to move on to the next step let's start off with uh well let's just start off with this one because it seems to be the nastiest all right so what we're going to do is we're going to get it wet okay we're gonna sprinkle our barkeeper's friend on here we'll take our green scotch bright and we're just going to scrub the bottle down now this is after it's been soaking in the um, the acid and water mixture 
it's not going to take very much scrubbing because all of that gunk is now uh, I guess you can say solidified it's no longer hard and stuck to the bottom now let's wash that off now this is just the outside of the bottle now look at that dude already that's before I've done anything to the inside okay that's just the outside all right so now what we'll do is we'll take our liquid barkeepers friend we're gonna squirt a little bit inside the bottle all right it's already got the little scotch bright thing that I told you about in there we're gonna add a little bit of water in there just so we can get some cleaning liquid in there so as you can see there all right we're gonna take our rod here we're gonna put it right on the scotch bright Sometimes it's kind of hard to get your hand on there when you, everything's wet. And I got too much water in there. There we go. And now we're just going to scrub the inside of the bottle. Holding pressure on that little Scotch Brite pad. Just scrubbing it. Scrub, 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 scrub. Scrubby dubby dub. Make sure we get it all up here in the neck. All down in the base all on the sides all right I'm gonna pull this out like this all right we've got a little bit of funk up here on the lip all right so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spray out the inside shake it up a little bit make sure we get all that gunk out of there And just keep filling it full of water until all of that uh, barkeeper's friend and that acid is cleaned out of the bottle. About three or four shakes normally will get it. Now that it's been in the acid, we've cleaned the inside and the outside. Now look at that dude. Absolutely gorgeous. It's got every bit of that dirt and every bit of that slime out of it. So we went from this to this in an hour and a half. Now, if you want to take it a step farther, you can have your bottles tumbled. Now, with relics that you dig out of the ground, as most of you know, uh, if you dig, let's say, a mini ball that's got a nice patina on it, and you take a grinder to it, and you make that thing just as slick and shiny as it was the day it was made, it decreases the value in that relic. Glass, on the other hand, bottles or opposite. If you get a bottle, you want the patina off of it. You want all that gunk off of it, and you want it to be absolutely mint like the day it was made. Uh, bottles increase in value once they're cleaned, versus relics do not. So if you want to take this bottle one more step, my advice to you would be join a Facebook group that's into bottles. And just reach out and say, does anybody tumble bottles? Most people charge about $10 per bottle to tumble it. And what they do is they put it in a tube, it's filled uh, with a uh, like an abrasive polish. Uh, there's little BBs or little copper pellets inside the bottle. And the bottle sits there and turns in this machine for four or five days. And when it comes out, it looks like this. It is absolutely mint. Shiny, polished, mint. So you can take a bottle that is worthless, like this one, to a bottle like this one, and have, you know, this bottle is probably worth 45, 50 bucks as is. Now there are some that are worth a lot more than that, uh, but I'm just giving you examples of how you can clean your antique bottles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean these other three. We'll get a quick little uh, after shot when these two are done and uh, we'll say goodbyes. All right, so that's it. Got them all clean. There's the Brown Brothers we started off with. Nice and minty, shiny, no dirt whatsoever. There's the big boy. It was all black and gooey. And there's that Coke that we saw. It's nice. It's got a couple of like, uh, looks like stress cracks in it that I couldn't see with all that dirt. And it's got a couple of bad spots on the bottom. Uh, but it is a local bottle. Uh, and it is a 1915, so I'm definitely going to hang on to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Learning how to take dud bottles that look like this from this to that.
in less than an hour and a half without spending a ton of money on a tumbler. If you like the content, you like what you see, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. Drop me a thumbs up. Be sure you guys follow me on Instagram for more tips, tricks of the trade. Good luck on your adventures. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.